Hey friends, this is another uh, vulnerable sharing video. This is a area of weight loss and maintaining that I don't really have it all figured out, but I'm working on it and I'm processing it and I wanted to share with you and tell me in the comments, can you relate to any of this? Um, I am back in therapy right now and part of what I've been working on with my therapist is that weight loss and maintaining is still hard for me and I don't really like that. <laughs> you know, I'm 20 years into maintaining a 100 pound weight loss and I kind of thought it would have gotten easier by now and certain aspects have, but some things are still really, really hard. I still really want to eat. I'm still hungry a lot and um, that's just really tough to, um, to accept. And something that my therapist has shared with me that has been very comforting and helpful it, although challenging, is the idea that when it comes to food and my weight specifically, I have PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress. And um, I don't really consider myself an anxious person overall. I have gone through periods of depression and anxiety, especially um, um, postpartum. But overall, I'm not really an anxious person, but yet with food, I am. I think about food a lot. I worry about not having enough. I worry about how strong my appetite is going to get. I worry about regaining the weight. Um, and um, what he has said is like, of course you do, of course you do. You know, you were 100 pounds overweight. You were on the traje trajectory of that potentially killing you. Um, yes, I was healthy at that point, well, healthy, ish but um but it if i would have continued on the path i was on there's a really good chance that i would have died of obesity complications my father died at a young age um 57 58 years old of heart disease my mom died of obesity complications both of my sides of my family extended family are overweight were overweight so yeah you know i really had to go against my genetic trend my brother does as well now um in order to um not um not die from obesity complications so it totally makes sense and then you add to that the challenges of living in a diet culture where um you know we're taught to like restrict beyond what is healthy or normal. Um, and I have certainly put myself on diets that were not healthy and were overly restrictive. And I still have to fight against the urge to overly restrict. So it makes sense that I would have that trauma. Um, you know, um, it, it just makes sense. So um, hearing him say that gave me a lot of relief and a certain level of acceptance, even though I can't say I really want to accept that I've had trauma. Um, also add to that the fact that I lived for my first 30 years in a body that society said wasn't okay, you know, said wasn't um, beautiful, said wasn't desirable, said wasn't attractive. And so I lived with that trauma too, you know, being, you know, teased in school and made fun of. And um, these days we would call it bullying. We didn't think about it as bullying at the time. But, um, you know, and then treated as an adult, as less than, ignored, walked away from um, people asking me if I was pregnant. That's happened even, um, you know, since I've lost the weight, you know. So um, um, there's just, there's a lot of trauma wrapped around this. And like I said, I, I don't have all the answers to this. I'm still processing it. But understanding that some of my continued struggles now are um, perhaps from some of the trauma that I have experienced and that it's really understandable. Um, what he is teaching me and as far as how to deal with it now is absolutely compassion instead of beating myself up for it. Like, you know, it's nine o'clock. I just ate breakfast. Why am I hungry again? Sarah, come on, get it together. Why can't you manage your hunger better? No, that's, you know, that's the old me. Me now is like, okay, Sarah, you know, it's understandable that you're thinking about food. That's just a really normal thing for somebody with your history, but let's focus on work and um, let's get some really great stuff out to help some people. And we'll worry about lunch when it comes. You've already got it pre-planned. You've got healthy food in the fridge. It's gonna be okay. That is a totally different way of speaking to myself and managing those PTSD type thoughts. 
He's also just encouraged me that it's not, I'm not really worried about that. I'm not really worried about lunch. There's something deeper going on. It's, um, it's that anxiety about the food that is totally understandable considering the history that I have. So if you can relate to any of this, will you just share? Like I said, this is a vulnerable sharing. It's it's kind of hard for me to put this out there. You know, some of you have shared like, Sarah, I don't really want to hear about how hard it is for you now. I want it, I want the fairy tale that when I get to my goal weight, it's going to be easy. And I, I get you because that's kind of what I want too. But many of you have also said, but I need to hear it. I know it's hard, but I need to hear it. Because like I always say, nothing magic happens at your goal weight. In fact, type that in the comments. Nothing magic happens at your goal weight. Choose today what you'll choose for a lifetime. So um, let's do this a realistic, healthy way that we can maintain for life. Tell me if you can relate to any of this. I'm Sarah with The Holy Mess. Love you guys. Thanks for watching.